Hello children. Today we move on to the second chapter from the text Moments titled The Adventures of Toto. It's written by Ruskin Bond. Ruskin Bond is an eminent contemporary Indian author of British descent. He has authored inspiring children's books and was awarded the Sahitya Academy Award. His first novel is The Room on the Roof, which has a sequel named Vagrants in the Valley. Till now, he has written over 300 short stories, essays and novels and over 30 children's books. He has penned two autobiographical volumes titled Scenes from a Writer's Life and The Lamp is Lit, Leaves from a Journal. Some of the other notable works of Ruskin Bond include Blue Umbrella, A Flight of Pigeons and Funny Side Up. And I hope all of you are familiar with the name and most of you would have read at least one story written by Ruskin Bond. Now we move on to the story that you have to learn. The Adventures of Toto. Before I proceed with the story, let me ask you, how many of you have got a pet at home? Many of you may have, many of you may like to have. Some of you would have had a pet earlier. Usually, normal cases, we have dogs as pets or you can have parrots as pets. In this story, we meet a monkey who is kept as a pet. The monkey's name is Toto. Okay, so have you ever had a baby monkey as a pet? Just imagine the situation. Toto is a baby monkey. Now, let us see whether he is mischievous. Grandfather bought Toto from a Tonga driver for the sum of 5 rupees. The Tonga driver used to keep the little red monkey tied to a feeding trough and the monkey looked so out of place there that grandfather decided he would add the little fellow to his private zoo. So that first paragraph itself gives us the reason why the grandfather bought the monkey. First of all, he had a private zoo. That itself shows that he loved animals. So may, uh, that uh, gives a hint that the grandfather had a lot of pet uh, pets at home. So seeing this uh, little red monkey tied to a feeding trough. A trough is a long, narrow, open container. So the space would have been very limited, right? So seeing the condition of the monkey in uh, that and the monkey looked so out of place there. It didn't suit. Seeing that the grandfather felt sympathy and decided Okay, I will buy it. I have so many pets at home. I have even a private zoo. I can call it a private zoo. So, I this is just, I will add on one more. And he bought it from the Tonga driver for the sum of 5 rupees. Toto was a pretty monkey. His bright eyes sparkled with mischief beneath deep-set eyebrows. And his teeth, which were a pearly white, were very often displayed in his mind that frightened the life out of elderly Anglo-Indian ladies. So, here... And the line, his bright eyes sparkled with mischief. That's very clear. Monkeys are always associated with mischief, right? So it's, you can imagine the eyes of the monkey, the baby monkey especially. And his teeth, which were pearly white, very often displayed in his smile. So actually it is a smile of the young monkey. But the effect was that it frightened the life out of elderly Anglo-Indian ladies. It frightened, um, uh, frightened the life out of it uh, is an idiom which means shock or frightened suddenly. But his hands looked dried up as though they had been pickled in the sun for many years. Yet his fingers were quick and wicked and his tail, while adding to his good looks, grandfather believed a tail would add to anyone's good looks, also served as a third hand. So here what is given in brackets, such comments and all, add on to the humorous element of the story. So he says that the tail, it added on to the good looks, to the beauty of the monkey. Not only that, it served as a third hand also. How? He could use it to hang from a branch and it was capable of scooping up any delicacy that might be out of reach of his hands. 
so delicacy is something that is good to eat so something that is good to eat which is kept a bit away from him with with us which was out of reach for the monkey his tail helped him in getting that grandmother always first when grandfather bought home some new bird or animal brought home grandmother always first when grandfather brought home some new bird or animal so it was decided that tortoise presence should be kept a secret from her until she was in a particularly good mood who was in a particularly good mood the grandmother otherwise she might not allow so let us keep it as a secret till she is in a good mood when she is in a good mood we will tell her and allow get make it public the presence of the monkey there grandfather and i put him away in a little closet opening into my bedroom wall closet is a tall cupboard okay where he was tied securely or so we thought to a peg fastened into the wall so that is what the grandfather and the narrator um, felt that the, the monkey is uh, safe and has been secretly kept in a little closet opening into my bedroom wall where he was tied securely that is what they thought that they have tied it properly or so we thought there's a hint there what is that at that time they thought that they have tied it securely now we will know what happens later a few hours later when grandfather and i came back to release toto we found that the walls which had been covered with some ornamental paper chosen by grandfather now stood out as naked brick and plaster you can imagine the mischief of the monkey right so the wall early it was covered with some ornamental paper chosen by grandfather so they had decorated the wall like that now it was naked brick and plaster you could see the brick and plaster the peg in the wall had been wrenched from its socket wrenched means pulled violently from its socket and my school blazer blazer you know the colored jacket that you wear my school blazer which had been hanging there was in shreds shreds means pieces i wondered what grandmother would say but grandfather didn't worry he seemed pleased with toto's performance can you tell me why because this is something what is expected of a monkey right so the grandfather was very happy oh, yes the monkey it behaved the way it usually does he is clever said grandfather given time i am sure he could have tied the torn pieces of your blazer into a rope and made his escape from the window it would have done that also if he it had got enough time his presence in the house still a secret toto was now transferred into a big cage in the servants quarters where a number of grandfather's pets lived very sociably together what do you mean by very sociably together no enmity between them am amidst them understand they all were very cordial to each other what all a tortoise a pair of rabbits a tame squirrel and for a while my pet goat but the monkey wouldn't allow any of his companions to sleep at night so grandfather who had to leave dehradun next day to collect his pension in saharanpur decided to take him along so if you get a question why did grandfather decide to take the uh, take toto along with him when he went to saharanpur what is the answer it didn't mingle well with his roommates isn't it uh, it didn't allow any of his companions to sleep at night so the grandfather was concerned so he took unfortunately i could not accompany grandfather on that trip but he told me about it afterwards so uh, the narrator did not witness in person what happened there but now what he is going to tell us is what has been told to him by his grandfather after the journey he did not witness it a big black canvas kit bag was provided for toto this with some straw at the bottom became his new abode abode here means home that is where uh, toto was kept he, uh, that is how he carried toto along with him when the bag was closed there was no escape toto could not get his hands through the opening and the canvas was too strong for him to bite his way through his efforts to get out only had the effect of making the bag roll about on the floor or occasionally jump into the air 
an exhibition that attracted a curious crowd of onlookers on the Dehradun railway platform. So you can imagine uh, the onlookers, the, um, the strangers, a man is coming, an old man is coming with a bag and that bag either it will roll on the ground or roll about on the floor or suddenly it jumps into the air. So naturally they will become curious. What is there inside the bag? Why is, the, why is it like that? Toto remained in the bag as far as Saharanpur. But while grandfather was producing his ticket at the railway turnstile, Toto suddenly poked his head out of the bag and gave the ticket collector a wide grin. So, till then everything was smooth. Okay, no problem. Okay, when, the, when they reached Saharanpur and grandfather was producing his ticket at the railway turnstile, turnstile, the last page of the lesson, they have shown the picture also. That is turnstile. A mechanical gate consisting of revolving horizontal arms fixed to a vertical post, allowing only one person at a time to pass through. I hope you all have seen that. So that, uh, at the turnstile, Toto suddenly poked his head out of the bag somehow and gave the ticket collector a wide grin. Grin is a smile. You can call it a smile. Uh, showed his teeth. That is what it means. The poor man was taken aback. Naturally, nobody would have expected a monkey inside a bag, right? Taken aback means shocked. But with great presence of mind and much to grandfather's annoyance, he said, Sir, you have a dog with you. So look at that. That is why grandfather's annoyance. Seeing a monkey, the ticket collector said, that, Sir, you have a dog with you. You will have to pay for it uh, accordingly. In vain did grandfather take Toto out of the bag. In vain did he try to prove that a monkey did not qualify as a dog or even as a quadruped. Quadruped is an animal which has four feet. So you cannot call monkey even that. So how can you say that it is a dog and you have to pay for that? But no use. In vain means no use. Grandfather tried to do the grandfather produced the monkey before the ticket collector. He explained but no use. Toto was classified a dog by the ticket collector. And three rupees was a sum handed over as his fare. So he said, no, it's a dog. It's a dog. You have to pay three rupees. Then grandfather, just to get his own back, to get his own back means tit for tat. As a reply to what he said, took from his pocket, pocket of a pet tortoise and said, what must I pay for this since you charge for all animals? So, okay, you said three rupees uh, since it is a dog. Now, what, do you, what will be the amount that I have to pay for this? The tortoise. The ticket collector looked closely at the tortoise, prodded it with his forefinger, prodded means poked with his forefinger, gave grandfather a pleased and triumphant look. Triumphant means victorious look and said, no charge, it is not a dog. Look at the reply. So, as per the rules, Dogs, if you if a passenger has to carry a dog, has to pay three rupees. So as long as it is not a dog, you need not pay. Understand? Uh, uh, the monkey he classified it under dog and said three rupees. When Toto was finally accepted by grandmother, he was given a comfortable home in the stable, where he had for a companion the family donkey Nana. On Toto's first night in the stable. Grandfather paid him a visit to see if he was comfortable. To his surprise, he found Nana, without apparent cause, pulling at her halter and trying to keep her head as far as possible from a bundle of hay. Halter, again the meaning is given. A rope or strap placed on the head of a horse or a other animal used for leading or tethering it. So he, uh, that is how he behaved. Uh, Nana, without apparent cause means without any um, visible cause, pulling at her halter and trying to keep her head as far as possible from a bundle of hay. Grandfather gave Nana a slap across her haunches and she jerked back, dragging Toto. He gave her a beating and uh, she jerked back, dragging Toto with her. He had fastened on to her long ears with his sharp little teeth. So that was the reason why the donkey behaved like that. Toto and Nana never became friends. A great treat for Toto during cold winter evenings was a large bowl of warm water given to him by grandmother for his bath. He would cunningly test the temperature with his hand, then gradually step into the bath, first one foot, 
then the other as he had seen me doing the all the narrator doing understand he has observed all that monkeys always imitate right so he has seen how uh, the young boy uh, touches and see whether the uh, water is very hot or not so same way he also did until he was into the water up to his neck once comfortable he would take the soap in his hands or feet and rub himself all over when the water became cold he would get out and run as quickly as he could to the kitchen fire in order to dry himself if anyone laughed at him during this performance toto's feelings would be hurt and he would refuse to go on with his bath one day toto nearly succeeded in boiling himself alive so these scenes and all nothing to be explained you just visualize how that uh, it's a pet monkey how he imitated the narrator and taking about uh, touching and seeing whether the warm was water is warm enough then uh, putting one foot then the other and uh, till his neck is covered with water and once uh, how he applies soap and when water comes out goes to the kitchen uh, fire to dry himself and if he observe somebody is watching he doesn't proceed with his bath one day it happened that he nearly succeeded in boiling himself alive he, he, again the poet uh, the on uh, author has put it in a very um, humorous way uh, look at the line toto nearly succeeded in boiling himself alive as if he deliberately did it a large kitchen kettle had been left on the fire to boil for tea and toto finding himself with nothing better to do decided to remove the lid finding the water just warm enough for a bath he got in with his head sticking out from the open kettle this was just fine for a while until the water began to boil till then it was okay it was like as if he was getting ready to uh, bath when the water began to boil things became serious toto then raised himself a little but finding it cold outside sat down again he continued hopping up and down for some time until grandmother arrived and hauled him hauled him and pull drag him out half boiled out of the kettle if there is a part of the brain especially devoted to mischief that part was largely developed in toto in simple words if we put it toto was very mischievous yes he was always tearing things to pieces whenever one of my aunts came near him he made every effort to get hold of her dress and tear a hole in it understand so that is how it behaved one day at lunch time a large dish of pulao stood in the center of the dining table we entered the room to find toto stuffing himself with rice my grandmother screamed and toto threw a plate at her one of my aunts rushed forward and received a glass of water in the face when grandfather arrived toto picked up the dish of pulao and made his exit through a window we found him in the branches of the jackfruit tree the dish still in his arms he remained there all afternoon eating slowly through the rice determined on finishing every grain and then in order to spite grandmother who had screamed at him he threw the dish down from the tree and chattered with delight when it broke into a hundred pieces look at that he was so happy that it broke into hundred pieces how angry the grandmother would have become right first of all he threw it down and chattering when with delight when he saw it uh, breaking into pieces obviously toto was not the sort of pet we could keep for long even grandfather realized that we were not well to do well to do means we were not that rich and could not afford the frequent loss of dishes clothes curtains and wallpaper so full repair all the time of breaking dishes tearing clothes curtains and all so they couldn't afford to go on buying or repairing those so grandfather found the tonga driver and sold toto back to him for only 3 rupees so look at that when he sold it back he got only 3 rupees but still it was worth worth because if he had toto with him it would have caused him much more right so that is the story hope you understood thank you children